Yo, what up, people? Smithers are just regular Smithers are today. Here to give you Yucho Ten Kazuku episode eight review. I'm not gonna lie, this was emotional. It was deep. And I don't even really. This is one of those things that I can't. Like, really, if you haven't seen the episode yet, do not watch this video. Like, that's one of those things I gotta say. Because you have to see this episode, because it's very important. It's a very emotional, deep episode. And so let me explain. The second oldest went out to have drinks with his father. And consoled to him that he was in love with, of course, the main character, Yasha Bros. Fiance. And he said he would do something about it. Which will tie in a little bit later near the end of the video. Which you should watch, trust me. If you watch this series or you like it or you enjoy it. Or even if you haven't checked it out yet and you're watching this video to see if you like it or not. Which would be kind of weird. Just wait till the end of the video. It's important. The thing is, he turned into a... They were walking out. He turned into a train. And they rolled past downtown like going through streets and scaring people because that's what of course the second oldest was known for that was his famous transformation just like the first oldest he can transform into a giant tiger his thing was of course a train a freight train or something they could transform into and give people rides and stuff like literally just like right on the street and then of course, he woke up after that, and he, they waited for Dad for days, and he felt responsible. And then when Dad was finally eaten, he broke down. And he couldn't face his mother, he couldn't face his family, and so he just gave up and became a frog in a well. Literally, and figuratively. This episode was very emotional. And then you find out later that the last person he talked to wasn't the second oldest. It was, of course, the professor. He came, apparently, before he went to the afterlife to him to tell him that he was eaten by a hot pot and, the profe and asked him to take care of Yashabro. The professor said his farewells and they parted. And the professor said something very, very, very inspiring, sort of. He said, Raccoon Dogs, aka, fuck, fuck the name, fuck the name, Tanku, Tanku, fuck, Raccoon Dogs, Raccoon Dogs, and the Tenju, we both fall into our places. His just happened to be a hot pot. You see, when uh, for us tend you, we just fall on the roof of your house. And then you, when you think back to the whole thing about life and being eaten, and it just all connects. And his father really was a great man. And then, of course, we find out that the mother has known all along, of course, that the second oldest saw father last. And everybody's, well, of course, the oldest is crying. And it ends off, I know I'm, I'm going this nice, fast way through it. Fuck it. I, I can't, I can't go to every single detail. I would I break down too much. And then what happened was first oldest is crying and then the episode ends off with this amazing quote because it was stated multiple times that we have the blood of our idiot father. And he said that these sons cannot separate because they all have my blood. They're different parts of me. The oldest inherited, of course, 
the only responsible part of so that's what the mom called him their dad he inherited the only responsible part he is Mr. Responsibility then the second oldest he inherited his father's easygoing attitude and nature. The youngest inherited his father's innocence. And of course, Yashabro, the main character, inherited his father's idiocy. And then goes into this deep, like, white light, and then it's like, when somebody dies, I'm not gonna, I can't say a word for it because it was too good. I'll try and break it down. When somebody dies, it leaves a greater impression on those that remain. Something like that. Yeah, I know, I know, I probably somewhat butchered it, but fuck it. It was just too good. I can't. I can't even copy it. I mean, this episode. I was like, whoa. There's something I have to say. I do not think that the second oldest is responsible for his dad's death. I don't. Why? Okay. <clears throat> okay, let's get into Smithers, of course, review mode. What we learned in this episode is, of course, that he didn't want his brother, his son to separate, and so he said that he would work something out in order to keep all the sons there, because he didn't want them to separate. And since Yashabro and, of course, his brother, who detested him, his daughter, were said to be married, but the second oldest was in love with Yashabro's fiancé, cousins, love, fuck it, it was, fuck it. It's kind of weird, but fuck it, they're animals, fuck it, they do what they do, fuck it. Thing is, I think that after he dropped, was dropped off by his dad and left downtown, he went to go see his brother to try and, of course, get the marriage canceled. And either he gave up his life in order to get the marriage canceled, or his brother saw the weakness in him that he couldn't transform and gave him to the Friday Fellows. And then he felt sorry about it later or wanted to keep to his word or something like that. And so he broke off the marriage. That's what I think happened. I mean, I know it's a weird theory that's out there, but it's a possibility. Because the marriage was broken off. And the only person that could have done that was, of course, the dad. The father. And so, it makes sense. And now that his uncle is trying to take over where his brother was as the top of the top. The leader of the raccoon dogs. It makes even more sense. That that would happen only a couple years back. It does. I mean, it just fits perfectly in there. I know it's a weird theory, but I don't really want to believe that the second brother was responsible. And that someday he'll get out that well. So maybe I just imagine that that is a possibility, but it seems like a very logical possibility to me that he was betrayed by his brother or he did it and so so that his sons would stay together either way I believe that the last person who saw him alive except for the Friday fellows had to be his brother it has to be because the marriage was called off And of course, Yashabro, if you don't already know, 
he only has a thing for one girl, apparently. Possibly, there's like a connection there with his cousin slash ex-fiance. But he really is in love with Ben 10, a human. So I don't know exactly where it's going to go. Or what it's going to do from after this point. But I do know that this was a fucking amazing episode. I would give it a 9.3 out of 10. I just can't give it an amazing. Well, no, no. Because the depth and the sincerity and the motion and the regret behind it, it boosts it past amazing, but it isn't quite epic. So, it's, it's amazing plus. Fuck it. 9.3 out of 10. That's what this episode gets. Smithers are giving you episode 8 review 9.3 out of 10. Comment down below what you guys thought about this week's episode. And of course, of course, what do you think about my theory? Throw down a like if, if you want to. If you like the video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you, if you disagree with me and you don't like the video, go ahead and hit the dislike button. And overall, subscribe for more content. And so, with that being said, I will see you later. Another day. Most likely tomorrow. Yeah, see you tomorrow. I'm motherfuckers.